Hi and welcome to this magic workshop. Now the idea behind this is to share with you magicians out there some ideas that we come across. Now as a magician you'll know that sometimes you could be doing anything lying in bed working and an idea comes to you of a particular routine or trick you'd like to perform and that's what this idea is of the workshop. When we get ideas I'm going to reveal them here and uh, you guys watching can kind of contribute and give your ideas and maybe improve what I'm about to show you. So this is not intended for the general public and in fact if you're watching this and you're not a magician it's not going to be that much use to you because I'll be using terms like Buckle, Elmsley, Hammond and all those terminologies that magicians know. So, what's the idea behind it? Well, here's a routine that I kind of thought up the other day and it was just an idea that came to me of using one of these, this clear envelope. So what I'm going to do is do a, a very rough performance. It's not going to be highly polished, I haven't rehearsed it, but it's going to give you an idea of what I'm aiming to achieve. And then at the end we'll go through it and show you exactly how it worked and maybe you guys can inject your own interpretation and maybe add some bits to improve the idea that I've started with. So here's the magician's performance of this workshop routine, which I'm going to give a, a, a name of Jumping Jack. You may call it something else once you've devised your own routine, but for now, in the workshop, we'll call it Jumping Jack. What we use is an envelope, a clear envelope, which you can see all the way through. We also use just a regular deck. Now, because it's called a jumping jack, I'm going to find a particular jack. doesn't really matter which one. This will do, a red or black, but I'm going to go for this one, which is the jack of clubs. And we're going to isolate this into the envelope as so. And I push that in nice and clear. You can see that. Uh, I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but there it is entrapped in the envelope. Now what I am going to do is to put this on the table and not touch it throughout the routine. Keep an eye on that. You then need to get a spectator to choose any card and they really can have any choice so get them to take a card but the important thing here is to stress that they do get a free choice and that they can change their mind if they want. If they don't want this then give them the chance to choose another one. But let's say they stick with this one which happens to be the red 10, the 10 of hearts. We'll use that one and you can give it to them to examine because it is just a regular 10. Uh, on there but also we do need some additional cards from the pack and I want to make this as clean as possible we need one two let me spread these out and three we only need three additional cards from the pack okay let's square this up and let's take a look at the three cards although this isn't really important but uh, I just thought it's a nice touch to show them the three cards okay so we have a, a five a seven and we also have um, an ace so three cards on there now we're going to add the chosen card to this but not face down we're going to actually add it face up now we've already seen all of the cards here so I'm going to add this face up in among the other cards. Now this is where the magic happens. Watch. Four cards. We can't miss the chosen card, but watch. There's one. There's two. There's three. There's four. Just a little shake. Watch the ten. One, two, three, four. It's flipped face down. You're impressed, but that's not the real magic. Here's the real magic. Watch. Just a little flick. It's the flick that does the trick. Here we go. One, two, three, four. The card has flipped back over, but this time it's changed to this one. The jack. The jack of clubs. Now, it really is just a regular card there the jack of clubs now of course that leaves us with the cards here the top one 
Is that the 10? No, that's the 7. What about the bottom card? No, that's the ace. And you're probably thinking, well, maybe the 10 is still in the middle. Let's take a look at the third and final card. It's not. Okay. So there we have the 1, the 2, and the 3 cards. All there. Along with a jack. Well, remember, the jack was entrapped in here. Well, if this is a jack, watch. This is the magic. And there is, if you can see that, the 10 of hearts. The chosen card has exchanged places with the jack on there. Okay. Now what we can do is we can actually remove this. Let me just remove this out of there. Okay. And uh, the envelope is empty, as you can see. Now... The whole thing about this is that <clears throat> you only use the four cards and the jack, okay? So we got all the four cards and, of course, the jack. So remember, there's the jumping jack, three cards and the chosen card. The spectator can choose any card and they can examine the pack. There's no duplicate ten that swapped places they are all genuinely different. So that's the routine. Now it wasn't a professional performance, so before you guys watching this say, oh you made a mistake here, you did this, I saw this. It was just for you guys to give you an idea. It's a routine that I kind of came up with the other day, and the reason being is because I've owned one of these for years and I've never ever used it. It's a fantastic item. So let's go through the routine so you can see how I did it. Although I'm guessing that being magicians watching this, you probably already know. But here's the workshop expose. Uh, these things you can buy from eBay for about a pound. They're as cheap as anything, but they're great little gadgets. And um, anyone in the know will realize how this works. It's a very clever principle. When you push on one end, it displays a card. Let me show you what I mean. If I press on this side, you'll see that it reveals a card. Let me press on the other end, and it vanishes. It's a great transposition. Okay, and I've loved this envelope for a long time, but I've never had a routine to use it. And uh, having a clear out the other day, that's why it came to me to try and use it in this routine. Now, the the workshop routine you saw, I thought it had a bit of a messy ending. Uh, I'm sure you guys will uh, give your ideas on this video, and maybe it'll even give you some ideas to put your own interpretation and routine together along the same lines. But let's go through it. So now we know that this works. If you buy one of these, you're going to have to see what card appears when you do the routine. Now this one is the Ten of Hearts. Now, you've probably already guessed that the Ten of Hearts is not a free choice, as was stated in the performance. It's a force. Okay, so uh, I've got to force the Ten of Hearts. Now, I'm sure you guys know 101 different ways of forcing a card. I just done a very crude and uh, simplistic one. Uh, what else do I need? Although it's not essential, uh, I have actually got two Jack of Clubs. Okay. Now you don't need to have two of these, I just thought the transposition idea was quite good, but it would work just as well that the card vanishes from here and appears in the envelope. But let's go through it. I've got two of these, the false card and any cards. The rest of the deck is just regular, you don't need anything on there at all. What I did was to put... Um, the jack on top and then a 10 on top that's the false card and then I just put the duplicate jack anywhere in the pack this is the routine that I, I did on there first of all 
make sure you know which way round this goes. Okay. You can show the cards, they're regular, they are a regular deck. Uh, I then went through and removed the jack, now in this case our duplicate jack. I then put this in. Now I'm going to go through pretty quick because you guys, I'm not going to explain the moves because you'll probably know them better than me. But I push this in and you can see it going in, push it all the way in, down there and I'm pushing on the side, there you can see the jack. Now before I put it down, I do actually push here, which as you know, will change it to the 10. So as I put this down, I do press on that and put it down. That The trick is done there. That's why I can just flip this over at the end to reveal that. There's no funny moves. So that's all done. Then we come onto the pack and we need to force this top card on there. Now I'm sure you guys will do a slip cut force or uh, a classic force or any of those, but I just done a very simplistic one. You ask them to take a card, uh, I then just double it up, turned it over, flipped over and dropped this on top and then gave that to the spectator to examine. But remember, all you've got to do, you don't have to go through that performance, you can just force it how you like. So we forced that onto them. I then need to remove apparently three cards, one, two and three. I'm actually going to remove four. I'm going to remove the secondary jack along with the next card so I get a break I always just clip it and then say I'm going to take three cards one two and three okay but whichever method you use now when you remove these the state of play is that the duplicate jack is the third one down because that allows me to show them flip the first one over slide it off. Flip the second one over to show that. I'm then going to do a buckle move to take two cards as one and that reveals this. And I just clip them like that. So you've shown three faces. At this point the spectator doesn't realise anything's happened yet so they're not looking for anything. Actually we've got the jack reversed there. Square the pack up and you're going to add the 10 face up. You need to get it under the top card, but you have to be careful not to reveal this card here. So, um, in my routine, what I did, I turned my hand over and just spread the card to glimpse that, pulled it back and got a break. But I'm sure you guys have got a much fancier way than that. I'm exaggerating that, I've got a huge break here, because that allows me to slip this face up in there like that. Now the rest of it is just an Elmsley count. You don't have to put any moves in at all, just the Elmsley count. So when you do the Elmsley count you count aloud because they know you've got four cards. So you go one, two, three, four. They see the card face up. You do some magic wave and cause the card to turn face down. So you do the Elmsley again one, two, three, four. Straight away they've seen the card flip face down. And then the final kicker is when you do a third El Elmsley count, this blows them away because they were expecting to see the 10 turn up. It's actually the jack that was in here. Now at this point I then put the top card to the bottom. This can be shown in case they think you're using special cards and there's anything on the back, you can throw that down on the table. With the cards left in the hand, you can then reveal them. I'm going to reveal the top and bottom one. This is a state of play. So, again, the way I do this is I turn the top card over. Is the 10 there? No. What about the bottom? I just buckle that off of there, flip it over, and that apparently leaves the middle card and I just do the pull this back to reveal that and then just push forward. Now of course the move I'm doing you probably all know from other tricks out there this and that type routine and I just turn this over and it's a, the third and final card. 
To show the cards again, you can do what you did at the beginning of the trick, do this, do a buckle to hide the 10, and then show this one, and I slip that here, so we've got the three cards. I'm going to square the cards up, turn them over, the 10 is here. You can take the jack and put that to the bottom, and that's when you reveal that the 10 is here. There it is there. It's a great transpositional effect. You then pull this out. Now remember, this is the jack. So of course, as you pull this out, I grab it on top of the pack, like this. And I just put these on top of the deck while I show them the envelope here. Remember to press the edge to make it invisible or see-through again so there's nothing in there you then casually deal off the one two three four cards and the fifth card like that you then spread the card to say you chose the ten of hearts you could have had any card most people think there's a duplicate of that you can say there's no duplicate in there and that's it it's a great idea it's not a full routine it needs to be polished and hopefully you magicians watching this will go even further and maybe make it a lot better feel free to do a video and upload it it'd be great to see that if you're really worried about them examining the pack and seeing the duplicate here remember the other jack is on top of the pack here so you could either palm it off or just lose it in your lap or something like that i'm sure you'll find a way of getting rid of that very easily and that's the jumping jack Enjoy and good luck with your interpretation.